This is web unmarked key as part of UTCTF 2023. Uh, it was in the web category, but I feel like it's more of a networking sort of cryptography challenge. Um, this was a pretty crazy challenge, uh, one I'm definitely not going to forget. Uh, but it just takes you all over the place. This, this challenge was a journey. Um, it took a while before anyone solved it, and I can kind of understand why. Um, it, it takes a second to get going, but once you get going, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, so it says unmarked key. The submission server has been down for a month. Uh, the file system is completely gone. There's an SSH. We can access it on port 1134. There's also a web service on 443, or there is no web service on 443. Uh, for some reason, we're only given half of the certificate and the full private key. And uh, yeah, like I said, so we were given a couple of hints. Even though you have SSH access, you can't you know, execute shell or use SCP. Okay, that was the first hint. Um, for SSH, the username doesn't matter, and you don't need it. Uh, you don't need to authenticate. Okay. And the last hint, the flag is being repeatedly sent as a HTTPS request to port 443 on the server. This was the, the hint that finally made things click for me. So what's happening is there's some box out there, and uh, we're assuming the box is just dead for whatever reason. The file system's broken. We can still SSH to the box, and for some reason, the flag is repeatedly being sent to the box from some old challenge or something. Who knows? And we're given a private key for the web server that used to be on the box and part of the certificate. So strange challenge. I think probably the key insight uh, and I would, what I would guess blocked most people was knowing how to do an SSH tunnel. I think once you can do an SSH tunnel, you kind of understand what the challenge is actually asking and you can finish it. That's just my guess. But anyways, the first step uh, to doing this was, like I said, was an SSH tunnel. So we're able to SSH to the box on port 1134, but if you do, actually, we can just do that. SSH guppy.utctf.live port 1134. Um, it says, yeah, file system corruption detected, unable to launch shell, and nothing happens. Um, so slightly weird, but uh, if, you've, if you know what an SSH port is, uh, it, it's something to try. Um, I wouldn't have guessed. I mean, this, I feel like this challenge is a little bit contrived, um, but you can try it. And so basically what this port forwarding is going to do. It's like a feature of SSH. So what it's going to do is it's going to connect to that box and any traffic that goes to port 443 on that box, I'm telling SSH to instead redirect it to port 443 on localhost. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a little netcat listener down here. So I'm going to do clear netcat listener. So this is going to listen on 4443 and I'm going to do this SSH port forwarding. So like I said, we're going to SSH that remote box we're going to tell SSH on that box that any traffic that goes to 443, instead redirect it to my machine, localhost, on port 4443. Cool. So when we do this, um, we have to wait a second, but then we'll start getting traffic down here. So we have uh, traffic. This is the, well, it's probably a couple things. Uh, this is the flag being sent to that server and then redirected back to us locally. So at this point, I started doing uh, some PCAP dumps to see what the traffic looked like. Um, it's failing on the handshake because whatever is making the web request, you know, it expects it's a TLS connection and it expects the server to present that uh, a correct certificate. And right now we're not presenting anything. We're just listening. So the server is connecting to us and we're just not sending anything back. We're just listening. And so at this point, the challenge started making sense. Like it seemed very weird for them to give us the private key for uh, a web service, uh, but now the, the I mean the goal is kind of clear. So we can redirect that traffic that's supposed to be going to that box to our box, and now we need to set up a fake web service that'll you know do the correct TLS handshake, and then we should just receive the flag. So really, it's more of like a certificate juggling sort of challenge. So we were given two little cert things. We're given half of a public certificate and the full private key. You would think normally it would be the opposite, uh, but it adds a, a fun little twist to the challenge. So uh, th those were the only two files we're given. So if we look at the certificate, um, so certificates, I think it's in PEM format. Um, and so it's base64 ANSI DIR, um, this thing right here. So what we can do is go to Cyberchef, not Cyberpunk, um, and we'll go remove white space. Then we'll do from base64, uh, where's base64? Cool, and we get this. Um, there's a bunch of garbage. This is most likely, you know, a signed signature and some other extended options as part of the TLS certificate. Um, but we see this let's encrypt uh, org thing, and that's very interesting. So that means the certificate was generated with let's encrypt. 
And that means it's probably a real certificate, which means that it would show up on the certificate transparency log. And so that is how we can, instead of trying to reconstruct this public certificate, we can just find the original certificate because it should be published somewhere on the internet. Um, if you're not familiar with certificate transparency logs, uh, there's a lot to it, but the basic idea is that pretty much every certificate that is made these days goes on these logs that are searchable. And it's super cool if you work for an organization, um, so I used to work for MongoDB, we would check the certificate transparency log and make sure that no one is registering certificates for MongoDB domains without our knowledge. And so we would just see like, hey, who's registered a certificate for MongoDB in like, you know, the last month or so, and we would make sure that, you know, every certificate just makes sense. And so that way we know no one's trying to man in the middle of us or anything. Um, very, very cool, great for internet security. So anyways, um, if we can figure out what the certificate is, uh, we can just download it from the certificate transparency log. The trouble is, uh, we don't know anything about this cert. We, we have some like garbled information here, but we don't know what uh, domain name the flag request is requesting. So when that client, the, the flag client makes the request, there's, there's something called SNI, server name indication, and they're gonna say, hey, like, I'm, here's uh, what I'm requesting and I want a cert for this. I don't actually think I saw SNI in the Wireshark thing. Um, so maybe it was in there and I just missed it. Um, but they're basically, they're interested in a specific domain and we don't know what that domain is. Um, so yeah, basically they weren't sending SNI. If they were sending SNI, this would have been easy. We would know the domain and we can just grab it. But uh, because I couldn't see SNI and I thought SNI was always used, but maybe I'm wrong, um, we, or I missed it, uh, we had to be a little bit more clever. And so the trick that we employed was there's some website called Census and you can search. So normally when I do certificate transparency logs, I use a website like this, crt.sh, but you can only search on the domain and we don't know what the domain is. You can also search on the hash of the file, one of its fingerprints, but we don't have the hash of the file either. Um, I tried searching through the certificate, like maybe there's like a shortened, there's a bunch of hashes in there that are signed um, as part of the certificate structure, but none of them, I couldn't see how to extract it easily and I don't think those would work on cert.sh. But anyways, there's that other website, uh, the census, and you can specify some crazy stuff when you search on it. And so we have the private key, and with the private key, the private key contains, contains the public key. And so you can grab that out. Um, I think I have it saved. Yep. You can do open RSA in private key and then ask for the modulus. So this is the public key for the cert. And then we can search here for parsed subject key info, maybe make this bigger, uh, modulus with that modulus we gave it, and it found it. So here we have, we have a certificate that was generated with the name, you please t hack see this site f 2023 uh, moo.com. And so you can see there's UTCTF, which is, you know, University of Texas CTF. Cool, so we have the domain. Um, I wasn't able to download the, I, I could download the certificate here, but it didn't actually match the certificate we were given. Um, so we're looking for a certificate that ends in like this D1XNRQ. I figure we should, they should be the same. But if you just search for that domain here, you, you know, the please hack this site, um, you can go through and click through I forget which one it was, but on one of these, you can just, then you just download the certificate. So I download them, download all of them. I mean, it's just, you know, this, it, they look like this. Just find the one that matches the very end. Um, also, as part of developing or setting up a TLS server or an HTTPS server, um, it's important uh, to include uh, the full certificate chain. Um, if you're new to this, it's probably a lot, but basically the certificates are gonna be signed by some parent and some authority, and they're gonna say, you know, I validate the certificate. And there's gonna be a whole chain of them. And at the very end, you're gonna have this, this root certificate. Fun story, it actually exists on your laptop, and that's how you establish that chain of trust, but different story. Um, and so it's useful to include some of those intermediaries. Um, and I think for the client, it was expected to include the intermediaries. So Thankfully, there's websites now. I don't know if these have always existed, but um, those websites that'll generate these full certificate chains for you. So if you search a uh, certificate uh, chain uh, grabber or something, I forget what I searched for, or generator, let's do generator. Uh, cool, that's one. So we downloaded that real cert. Um, I'm just gonna copy this out. Uh, yeah, this is the one that ended in that, you know, XNRQ. So this is our real certificate that we just downloaded. Um, we're going to hit compose and it's going to generate our entire chain for us. And I think it tells us what our chain was somewhere. Uh, this one doesn't, but here, here's our chain. Oh, here, and we can see you please hack this, blah, blah, blah. And we should be able to see what its parents were. Um, no, you'll just have to trust me. It has parents. Um, cool. Maybe we can do a certificate checker. Maybe this will give us more information. Uh, it was issued, the issuer, I guess, was CNR3. 
whatever that means. But anyways, now we have the full certificate chain. So at this point, we need to set up a TLS server that will uh, correctly respond to that flag request to that guppy server. Um, so on Mac OS anyways, uh, apparently the certificate is using like some old MD5 hash or something like that. And Mac OS OpenSSL was just not happy with it at all. So I had to set up a server in Golang. Um, most likely if you're using like Linux or something, I don't know, something else, maybe it'll be happy to um, just work. But for some reason it wasn't working for me. But anyways, I set up this little Golang server. Um, nothing too special. Uh, ignore this. All it's going to do is it's going to dump any request. And that's it. And it just responds with a full TLS server. There's that cert real. So that's the certificate chain we downloaded. Here's the private key and it's listening on port 443. So we can go back here, gun, go run uh, server.go. So now that server is listening. And if we set up the bridge, um, hopefully we see the flag. Cool, there we go. So something just made a get request to submit ut flag dd if dev random of uh, out file dev sta. So, Crazy challenge. Um, like I said, it takes a little bit to get started. It took a while to know that you're supposed to do that SSH bridge, but after that, it was a lot of fun just kind of stringing together and finding the cert and going to the certificate transparency log and generating the chain and setting up TLS server and, you know, crazy challenge. So a lot of fun.